Welcome to the VPLT Knowledge Base. I'm Randall Greenlee from the VPLT, the German Entertainment Technology Association. I'm Director for Commerce and International Affairs, and our association is a partner of the Messe Frankfurt Exhibition and their worldwide brand, ProLight and Sound. Today's topic is Standards for Use of Machinery in the European Union and Germany. What standards play a role when using machinery in our sector? Some standards for use relate to legislation, such as EU directives, CE marking, and or national regulations and guidelines. Technical standards are established norms or requirements, usually for specific functions and or tasks. It is usually a formal document that establishes uniform engineering or technical criteria, methods, processes, and practices. European legislation is important for standards as well. European directives require member states to achieve a particular result by defining their own legislation to implement the goals of the EU directive. Directives usually leave member states with a certain amount of leeway as to the exact rules to be adopted. The Machinery Directive, or Directive 2006-42EC, is a European Union directive concerning machinery and certain parts of machinery. Its main intent is to ensure a common safety level in machinery placed on the market or put in service in all member states, and to ensure freedom of movement within the European Union by stating that member states shall not prohibit, restrict, or impede the placing on the market and or putting into service in their territory of machinery which complies with the directive. In other words, it ensures free trade and competition within the EU by setting certain standards for safety for machines sold and in use within the boundaries of the European Union. The directive applies to machinery as well as interchangeable equipment, safety components, lifting accessories, chains, ropes, webbing, removable mechanical transmission devices, and partly completed machinery. Currently, the Machinery Directive is under review. CE marking is an administrative marking that indicates conformity with health, safety, and environmental protection standards for products sold within the European Economic Area, EEA. By the way, it is not a quality indicator or a certification mark. The mark consists of the CE logo and, if applicable, the four-digit identification number of the notified body involved in the conformity assessment procedure. Any machinery used in the EU must have the CE marking. Let's take a look at the CE marking process. The first step is to identify whether the product needs to bear the CE marking or not. Not all products are required to bear CE marking. Only those products that fall within the scope of at least one of the sectoral directives requiring CE marking. In our case, the Machinery Directive. The second step is to check for the applicable requirements of the respective directives. Each directive has slightly different methods of demonstrating conformity depending on the classification of the product and its intended use. Every directive has a number of essential requirements that the product has to meet before being placed on the market. The best way to demonstrate that these essential requirements have been met is by meeting the requirements of an applicable, harmonized standard, which offer a presumption of conformity to the essential requirements, although the use of standards usually remains voluntary. Harmonized standards can be identified by searching the official journal on the European Commission's website or by visiting the New Approach website established by the European Commission and EFTA with the European Standardization Organizations. The new EN 17206, Entertainment Technology, Machinery for Stages and Other Production Areas, Safety Requirements and Inspections, is a harmonized standard. The third step is to identify hazards and risks through assessment. There are various attestation routes, which include a. an assessment of the product by the manufacturer, b. an assessment of the product by the manufacturer with additional requirement for mandatory factory production control audits to be carried out by a third party, or c. an assessment by a third party, for example, an EC type test, 
with the requirement for mandatory factory production control audits to be carried out by a third party. The fourth step is to define protective measures that allow the conformity of the product to the essential requirements of the directives. The fifth step usually involves a final assessment and or testing to make sure the evaluation of the conformity of the product to the harmonized standards was complete. The sixth step is to compile the technical documentation. Technical documentation, usually referred to as the technical file, relating to the product or range of products needs to be compiled. This information should cover every aspect relating to the conformity and is likely to include details of the design, development and manufacture of the product. The technical documentation will usually include technical description, drawings, circuit diagrams and photos, bill of materials, specifications and, where applicable, the EU Declaration of Conformity for the critical components and materials used, details of any design calculations, test reports and or assessments, instructions, the EU Declaration of Conformity. Technical documentation can be made available in any format, for example paper or electronic, and must be held for a period of up to 10 years. The seventh step is to make a declaration of conformity. When the manufacturer, importer, or authorized representative is satisfied that their product conforms to the applicable directives, an EU declaration of conformity must be completed, or for partly completed machinery under the machinery directive, an ECU declaration of incorporation. The requirements for the declaration vary slightly, but will at least include name and address of the manufacturer, details of the product, model, description, and the serial number where applicable, list of applicable sectoral directives and standards that have been applied, a statement declaring that the product complies with all of the relevant requirements, signature, name, and position of the responsible person, the date that the declaration was signed, details of the authorized representative within the EEA where applicable, additional directive standard-specific requirements, and in all cases, except for the PPE directive, all of the directives can be declared on one declaration. Once an EU declaration of conformity has been completed, the final step is to affix the CE marking to the product. When this has been done, the CE marking requirements have been met for the product to be placed legally on the EEA market. Standards Technical standards are normally developed by standards bodies such as DEAN, the German Standards Institute. Almost all countries have their own standards bodies. Standards can also be developed by groups such as trade unions, trade associations, or communities of interest like the EGVW in Germany, which is made up of 14 different associations from the event and live performance sector. In comparison to the standards developed by the national standards bodies, these standards are voluntary and are sometimes called industry standards. These might become mandatory if they are accepted by the government or the social accident insurance authorities. This is the case with the EGVW standards in Germany. The most important standards are of course those which are created by international or national standards bodies. On an international level, ISO, the International Organization for Standardization, is an international standard setting body composed of representatives from 164 countries. In Europe, SEN is responsible for defining European standards. The entertainment technology industry has its own technical committee, SIN TC433, Entertainment Technology. In Germany, DIN has four standards committees that are solely involved with entertainment technology. SEN standards are created by 30 national members, the 27 member states of the European Union, three countries of the European Free Trade Association, EFTA, and countries which are likely to join the EU or EFTA in the future. An important standard for our industry is AN ISO 12100-2010-11, Safety of Machinery, General Principles for Design, Risk Assessment and Risk Reduction. 
The standard specifies the basic terminology and methodology and sets out principles of risk assessment and risk reduction to help designers in achieving safety in the design of machinery. Another new important standard for our industry is AN 17206-2009, Entertainment Technology, Machinery for Stages and Other Production Areas, Safety Requirements and Inspections. This standard was created by the CENTC-433, Entertainment Technology. It's a new standard which is very important for the entertainment technology sector. There are, of course, other European standards that need to be considered. EN 14492-2-2010-05, Cranes, Power Driven Wenches and Hoists, Part 2, Power Hoists. EN 818-7-2008-09, Short Link Chain for Lifting Purposes, Safety, Part 7, Fine Tolerance Hoist Chain Grade T, Types T, DAT, and DT, and EN 6204-32-2009-03, Safety of Machinery, Electrical Equipment of Machines, Part 32, Requirements for Hoisting Machines. The German Standards Institute, DIN, still has some specific national standards that are relevant for using machinery in our industry. One of those is DIN 56955, 2017 10. Entertainment technology, load assumptions in stages and associated areas, safe working loads. Dean has the Secretariat of the CENTC 433, Entertainment Technology, Machinery Equipment and Installations, and is working on further European standards in the future. For the use of machinery, the Working Group 4 is currently writing a Code of Practice, Entertainment Technology, lifting and motion operations in the event industry. The accident insurance institutions are responsible in a variety of ways for occupational safety and health within companies and in the sector. Labor inspectors provide advice to and surveillance of companies in this area. In Germany, the DGUV is the umbrella association for the Institutions for Statutory Accident Insurance and Prevention, DGs, and the Public Sector Accident Insurers, UKs. The role of the statutory accident insurance in Germany is threefold. First, they are responsible for prevention of accidents through the implementation of health and safety guidelines for every industry. Second, they provide funding and facilities for rehabilitation. Third, they provide financial benefits and pensions for those employees who have had accidents at work. For our industry, the statutory accident insurance in Germany is very important in their role to prevent accidents from happening. They therefore define specific statutes for health and safety in the entertainment technology sector. There are several very important regulations for use of machinery that play a role in our industry. DGUV Regulation 1718 and DGUV Rule 115-002 Staging and Production Facilities for the Entertainment Industry, DGUV Regulation 5455, Wenches, Lifting and Pulling Equipment, DGUV Information 215-313, Safety Aspects and Productions and Entertainment, Overhead Loads, DGUV Principle 315-390, Principles for the Testing of Mechanical Equipment on Stages and in Studios, Let's take a look at some of the provisions in the DGUV Rule 115-002. To protect everyone working on stage during a production against inadvertent movement, the following precautions must be taken. 1. Moving parts of the above stage and understage machinery and their loads must be equipped with devices to protect against inadvertent movements. 2. To provide protection against inadvertent upward and downward movements by parts of the above stage and understage machinery and their loads, suitable drive systems, brakes, or counterweights in conjunction with locking devices must be in place. 3. Equipment must be in place which can bring the moving loads to a standstill if a fault occurs. And 4. Notwithstanding point 3, Safety equipment must be able to move as intended. 
substantial construction characteristics and protective measures against inadvertent movements of mechanical equipment are 1. Assessment of the load-bearing capacity of construction and load-bearing lines. 2. Technical design of engines and brakes, dynamic self-locking transmissions or redundant brake system. 3. Technical execution of load-bearing line terminations. 4. Orderly winding process of load-bearing lines, wire ropes. 5. Measures against overloads and speeding. 6. Measures against underload with guided loads. 7. Locks and restart blocks. 8. Protective devices in danger zones. 9. Measures for secure operation, natural handling, dead man switch. 10. Measures against non-observance of determined movement sequences. 11. Measures to prevent or master control system failures, for example, electric, electronic, or electronically programmable controls. And 12. Emergency stop devices. Risk assessment. Should there be any hazardous staging processes, an individual risk assessment is necessary, which will include an assessment of the extent of damage and probability of the occurrence. The risk assessment aims at deducing measures to minimize the residual risk. There are some general protection measures to always take a look at. There are some general protection measures that need to be considered. 1. Protection measures must be in place at hazardous points and equipment which is in motion for operational reasons. 2. If in specific cases protection at hazardous points is not possible due to compelling reasons, measures must be in place to ensure that there is a sufficient gap between fixed and moving parts, or visual or verbal communication is guaranteed between the persons at the control unit and at the moving parts. 3. It must be possible to indicate by unmistakable and clearly discernible signals at the access points to stage floor components, bridges, or sets that they are about to move or are in motion. 4. Moving equipment and parts which are walked upon for operational reasons must be equipped with protective equipments of such a nature that it is possible without hazard to walk onto, work on, and egress from them as well as to install and remove scenery. 5. The Iron Curtain, separating the stage from the auditorium, must be equipped with mains independent acoustical signal devices which signal the closing moment in a clearly discernible way in all operating modes. Qualified stage and studio workers are specifically certified persons who are able, thanks to their training, knowledge, and experience, to judge the assigned work and are aware of possible hazards. Those are, in particular, engineers, or respectively masters and bachelors of entertainment technology, senior event technology specialists, and event technology specialists. Due to the specific risks and hazards, the employer's duty is to very diligently select the qualified stage and studio workers. Here, the employee's risk assessment is most relevant in order to judge the upcoming tasks. The stage and studio workers' required qualifications and experience depend on the hazard potential of the works to be executed. The operating personnel must always take particular care not to endanger themselves or other persons while the mechanical equipment is in motion. The operational procedures of moving mechanical equipment must be organized in such a way that the operating personnel has reliable control over it. This control can be limited by interfering influences. These include, for example, 1. A multitude of simultaneous and or diverse movement procedures. two poor visibility conditions, three, too many and or ambiguous instructions, information, signals, and four, no intuitive user interfaces. The reference values for suitable maximum speed of mechanical equipment are one, without people, 1.2 meters per second.
two, with people, in general, one meter per second, on stage lifts, 0.7 meters per second. Three, in case of access and or egress during the movement, 0.3 meters per second. It is a very good idea to determine the responsibilities of those who are in charge of the technical aspects during a production process. The Dean 15750, which is also accepted by the DGUV, explains the role allocations and responsibilities of those who supervise and coordinate the installation, mounting, use, and dismantling of machinery and equipment in the event industry. The right of command plays an important role in ensuring that a production is safe. Qualified personnel make their decisions based on risk assessment, experience, and competence. So what else do we need to look at? Of course, the performers. All performers must be familiarized with the kind of moving equipment prior to the performance and looked after during operation by the supervisor or personnel put in charge by the latter. It is forbidden to be unnecessarily present in the vicinity of moving mechanical equipment. What about the EGVW? The EGVW is the community of interest for the event industry and has established several industry standards throughout the last few years. Since the 1990s, the EGVW has been publishing industry standards that are recognized by the German employer's liability insurance agencies and authorities having jurisdiction. These include standards for qualifications in the industry and for equipment used. There are 14 associations that work together in the EGVW. Two industry standards, the SQP2, Chain Hoist, and SQQ2, Entertainment Rigging Qualification, are of interest for us today. The EGVW SQP2, Chain Hoists. This standard applies to all chain hoists used in the entertainment technology industry. Regulations in Germany require that specific types of chain hoists be used for specific purposes in order to adhere to safety guidelines. Manufacturing requirements, labeling, proper use, inspection and maintenance are covered by the standard. Specific safety measures for a range of applications are presented. An explanation for the difference between statically determinant and statically indeterminate load systems is provided in the standard. The EGVW SQQ2, Entertainment Rigging Qualification. This standard applies to education and training for rigging in productions in the entertainment technology industry, as well as to the responsibilities of educational institutions providing criteria for judging the qualification of instructors. Rigging in entertainment technology applies to the installation and operation of event-specific load-holding devices. This includes transportation, horizontal travel, and fastening of loads in entertainment technology, as well as accessing the specific workspace while making proper use of the personal fall protection equipment. I hope you enjoyed today's quick presentation about a large topic. Please remember... The world of standards and in the entertainment technology industry, rules and equipment specifications change quickly. So keep yourself informed by joining an association in your country or region that can provide insight and the latest news in regard to the use of machinery wherever you may be. In the future, the VPLT will be providing more information on its website in English. So take a look at www.vplt.org. Thanks for your attention. And make sure to watch for more topics and updates in the VPLT Knowledge Base in the future.